Bernard Henri Levy, francuski pisac, filozof, novinar. Jedan od osnivača škole Novi Filozofi iz 1976. godine. Od početka rata angažovan je da pomogne građanima Bosne i Hercegovine. Tako je 1992. godine došao u ratno Sarajevo. Autor je filma i drugih dijela o ratnoj Bosni. Među prvima je pozivao na vojnu intervenciju zapadnih zemalja u ratu u bivšoj Jugoslaviji, te je među prvima govorio o logorima u Bosni i Hercegovini. U Sarajevu je proglašen počasnim građaninom. Mr. Levy, thank you very much for being with us. You are uh, back in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, uh, I can say so. Uh, this time with message, Europe mustn't leave Bosnia and Herzegovina. Why that message? Because Europe has a debt toward Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, Europe dropped Bosnia and Herzegovina during the war. Europe was um, guilty of complicity in uh, mass crime of the Serbs against Bosnia and Herzegovina. Europe is guilty of having tied the hands of Bosnia during the dark times. And today there is a debt of Europe toward Bosnia. And the only way to pay the debt should be to welcome, to embrace and welcome Bosnia and Herzegovina inside Europe, not as a gift, but as, as a due and a duty. But Europe is not doing so. Why? What do you think? Probably because Europe feels guilty. When you feel guilty, this is a psycho Analyst, analytic law, very well known. When you feel guilty, you repress the origin of your guiltiness. You deny. So there is in Europe a denial of what was done here, of the genocide, of the responsibility of the West in the acceptance and in the achievement of the genocide. And if you don't feel guilty, if you repress your feeling of guiltiness, then you don't owe anything. This is a way Europe behaves. And uh, as long as Europe will behave this way, there will be an uneasiness, a malaise, an illness in Europe itself. One often says that Europe is in crisis, that there is a crisis in Europe, that Europe is ill. I have the feeling, and more than the feeling, I have the conviction that one of the sources of the illness of Europe, of the uneasiness, feeling of uneasiness of Europe, is this repression of our guiltiness regarding Bosnia and Herzegovina. Is Europe making the same mistake over and over again? In a way, yes. Not only Europe, America also, and the rest of the world. There is a, cons a moment of the history of the 20th century, which is also a name, which is Munich, Munich. When, the, when Europe gave to Hitler, made the first concession to Hitler, Munich, agreement of Munich. European leaders believed that they saved peace, that they escaped, avoided war, and as Churchill said, you have the dishonor and you will have war. Munich is a recurrent temptation of the world, not only Europe. It happened in Bosnia, it happened and it happens at the moment we speak in Syria. There is a temptation to, to buy peace and by buying peace what you, what you get is dishonor and bigger war probably. This is a recurrent temptation, yes for sure. 
What have you seen in Bosnia and Herzegovina? For once is sure, the administration in Brussels would say, you have your uh, EU perspective, but you have to fulfill your uh, duties. Do you see that uh, people of Bosnia and Herzegovina, those who lead the country, do they understand their position and their obligations? They don't understand, and I understand that they don't understand. If I was a citizen in Bosnia, which I am in a way, since I am since a few weeks or months citizen of honor of Bosnia, which I already felt before be, to be, I would not understand this language. When you, when you have such a depth toward the people and the country, you don't act in this rude way. You have to be more humble. Europe should be more humble, more modest, more helpful, more uh, welcoming, more warm. Europe today has this sort of attitude in two countries, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the record, but Greece. Europe has a depth toward Greece. Greece invented Europe in a way. Look at how Europe acts toward Greece. How Europe is submitting Greece. How Europe insults Greece every day. Uh, how Europe deprives Greece of this principle of sovereignty which Greece invented. Toward Bosnia and Herzegovina, Europe finds all the possible ways to delay the date, to, to, to put it later and later and later. This is not serious. This is not fair. It is unfair. Is there anyone in this country, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, who have disappointed you over two decades? Let me, let's say so. How, can I, how could I reply to this question? First of all, uh, I come often in this country, but not enough. I'm not um, so familiar with the political life um, of, this, um, of this country. But I would say, nevertheless, that Part of Bosnia, between uh, Palais and Banja Luka, they don't do what should be done for the things to work. What you know? should be done? What should be done? What we do, for example, in a little festival, which I um, invented in Sarajevo, which happens every year in June, which is a kids' festival. I created the kids' festival of Bosnia-Herzegovina in Sarajevo 10 years ago. What happens? Kids come from all over the country, from Mostar and from Banja Luka, from uh, Sarajevo and from Tuzla, from uh, Gorazde and, and from Travnik. And they gather in Sarajevo for three days or four days. They arrive under the flag of their city. Banja Luka, Travnik, Mostar, first day. After one, after a few hours, at least after one or two days, the flags disappear. They are just children of Bosnia and Herzegovina. They, they create links, they create friendship, they, they play together when they are, little, when they are li very little kids. They maybe have romance where they are, when they are 17 or 18. There is, they are Bosnian citizens. This is what has to be done on a larger scale. The kids do it. The adults should do it. What the kids of Banja Luka understand after a few hours, it's a pity that the grown-up 
parents or grandparents still don't quite understand it always. What is wrong with them? What is wrong with them? That they did not do the mourning, the mourning of what happened 20 years ago. When such a crime is committed, uh, a work of mourning has to be done. A work of mourning. Remembrance, remorse, ex not, not self, uh, self punishment, no, not self punishment, but to understand, to get back to the crime, to know why it happened, to, to try to understand the workings of the possession. Some of the Serbians, not those of Sarajevo, but those of Palais, and those of Banja Luka, and those of Milosevic, were what Dostoevsky called possessed. So when you are possessed, it is a possession. When you see this, these images, which we saw just a few minutes ago of Karadzic, close to Alia Izabegovic before 92, sitting together. It is hard to believe that this same Karadzic will become a few months after this savage murderer, which he is going to become. But he did. So why? As long as you don't reply to the question of why and how, you will commit the crime, you will be you will be able to commit the crime again and again. So there is a work of mourning which has not been done. The Germans, after Second World War, they did the work of mourning. They did it. It was hard for them, I'm sure. But they had to do it for themselves, and they did. You're also here to mark the 10th anniversary of the death of uh, late president. Mr. Alia Izabegovic, uh, what is the importance of uh, uh, your visit here? Uh, was it, what, what is its significance for you? For me, to be there today is a, is a moment of great emotion. Um, I had a great respect for this man. I regarded him as a great man of modern history. I, I met a few in my life, but I did not meet anyone as Alia Izebegovic. So for me to be here today on this very special day, this sunny day, uh, with his family, with his friends, is a great great moment of emotion. It was hard for me to be here today because I had personal problems, but, but I did it. I, I wanted to be here today, to pay tribute, to pay homage, to be a my witness, my part of truth of, of Aliyah. Each of us has an Aliyah in his heart. Each of us. It's not the same. I was happy to say to the audience today, who was my part of memory of Alia? I was happy, and I will be happy to, to, to transmit all that, even in another way, maybe, for those who will um, build the, the, the memory of who was Alia Izebegovic. And the Bosnia and Herzegovina, as it is today, uh, is it the country uh, you advocated for and Mr. Izebegovic uh, hoped uh, would become? No, because there was Dayton, which was not the wish of Alia Izebegovic. Alia Izebegovic, uh, we have today all the evidence of, of that, and I have a few more to add to the file of history, was compelled to sign Dayton. He was compelled. 
it was not his wish. Dayton was in a way, in spite of their de military defeat, a political victory of the Milosevic Karadzic party. This was bad. And this created um, a Bosnia which was not the one advocated by Yalia Izetbegovic and those who followed him. This was the choice of the so-called friends of Bosnia. This is what Mr. Clinton, Mr. Mitterrand, and then Mr. Chirac wanted. And that is what Mr. Holbrook obliged Ali Izetbegovic to accept. Historians of the future will discuss, I'm sure. Could Alia avoid that? Had Alia Izetbegovic the possibility not to sign? Could his troops have rushed till Banja Luka in, in 95 or not? Historians will decide. I think that he was not, uh, it was impossible given the, situ the political situation of the time. So, uh, what do you think? How the rest of this region, the Balkans, especially the Western Balkans, how do they see your work? My work? Yes. Especially in Serbia, perhaps. Especially? In Serbia. In Serbia, <laughs> like, like everywhere else, you have, you have great people and you have uh, some who don't understand anything who did not learn anything from the past. I remember when I brought, a few years ago, 10 years ago, Bosna, the movie I shot during the war, about the war. I shot a movie called Bosna. I brought it to Belgrade. It was a strange moment. There was a great audience of people looking at this movie, discovering what they did in a way, and there were some who were furious of the very fact of this film was released in Belgrade. You had the two. There were some who wanted to, to knock me. And who is majority? Today, I, uh, at this time, I would not have risked a bet to say who is majority. Today, I would say that those who have entered in the work of mourning are the majority. Today, I would say that, you know, the, the very famous sentence, one day there was a, a German officer who came to the office of Picasso, Pablo Picasso, and he saw Guernica, the famous painting about the Spanish war. And the SS officer said to Picasso, this is great what you did. And Picasso said, no, I did not do, you did it, the massacre of Guernica. So when I show Bosna in Serbia, I show to the Serbian people what they did. I did not do the movie in a way. They did. Milosevic, in their name, did. Karadzic and Milosevic, in their name, did. More and more are aware of that today. So there is a real improvement. There is a real progress in the area. It has to go to the end. But the only way to go to the end, the real end of the end, will be the entry of Bosnia-Herzegovina in the European community. What about, uh, in that sense, uh, Serbia and their relations with uh, Kosovo and their European perspective? I think... You know, in, in history, you have the dreams and the re everybody has the right to have dreams. But you have to resign part of your dream when you are an adult people, when you, when you, when you accept to face your past and your future. And there is a Serbian dream which has to be dropped. The dream of uh, Kosovo being the birthplace of this and that and battle of Champ des Merles and so on and so on. All this myth which was, 
which is full of blood has to be dropped. Dreams are often myth and myths are often criminals. I think that more and more Serbs today admit that and know that and begin to renounce, to resign, to drop part of their dream, which is great, which is great. But it has to go to the end, to the end of the process. Uh, do you have concerns about uh, xenophobia, in especially in uh, modern Europe? Uh, is it a big threat in uh, developed countries nowadays? Yeah. Yeah. The threat today is um, not only xenophobia, um, a sort of um, a way of closing ourselves behind our borders, behind our so-called identity, which does not mean anything. Identity is a complex thing. Great identities are complex identities, but there is a danger to have more and more simple identities which consist in, in excluding the others and which results in racism and xenophobia. And this is a danger which exists today in uh, Hungary, in Poland, in France, in Germany, in Italy, in uh, all Europe. And if this prevails, if this happened to prevail, which I hope not, it will be the end of Europe. Because Europe was built in order to marginalize that. There will be always uh, part. Uh, racism will never extinguish. Xenophobia will never disappear. Fascism will always, there will be always some pockets, but uh, residual. If it grew, it will be the end of Europe. I hope it will not happen. When you see a young girl, Roma girl, being expelled from her school, what happened in France, and her entire family moved to Kosovo, expelled to Kosovo, even though many of them have never uh, seen Kosovo. Uh, what do you feel when you see those pictures? Scandal. Scandal. Number one, because school Number one, because of what you say. These people, are, this family is more French than Kosovar. They, they said it, the, uh, Leonarda said it, that her country, her familiar country is French. She does not know Kosovo, does not know anybody, does not have friends, that's all. And number two, but this is a Franco-French debate. I don't want to open it here, but School should be a sanctuary. School should be a sanctuary. You have a, f a few places. In Middle Ages, at this time of cruelty, churches, churches, pl places of, wor of religious worship were sanctuaries. You have uh, people with weapons had no right to enter. It's the same, school. Schools are sort of uh, secular churches, Police should not enter. You should not take a, a girl out of a school to put her in a plane and so on. This, this is not. This is not the France I like. And this is not my France. And you mentioned uh, some other countries uh, from uh, the European Union. So uh, with this uh, crisis, with especially in eurozone, you've described the situation with Greece. What is the future of uh, European Union uh, if we can remember uh, what Schumann used to uh, advocate for European Union? Togetherness, uh, freedom of movement, and we've described many of uh, things in European Union today. What is the future? The capital of Europe today is Lampedusa. Lampedusa, this uh, island, this little place at the south of Italy, which uh, sea is a um, cemetery where people come from Syria, from Africa, in very bad boats. They come, 
and in the way they die. Lampedusa is the symbol of Europe as it is today, which is an ill Europe, ill Europe. We have to watch Lampedusa. We have to watch Lampedusa. And one more thing. Um, you are the honorary citizens of uh, Sarajevo and you're uh, helping Bosnia and Herzegovina. You've uh, worked hard to help uh, the country, especially during the war. And uh, where do you find your inspiration, your motivation? In my, in my intimate consciousness, I will never forget when I entered first in Sarajevo in uh, May 1992. Uh, I felt an immediate, total revolt against what I saw, which was the snipers in the uh, hills above Sarajevo shooting the children in the yards of the houses. For me, it was an experience which I will never forget. And this experience was my inspiration to try as I could, did my best, to alert the public opinion, to alert François Mitterrand, to, to shake Jacques Chirac, to go to Bill Clinton at this time, to, to shoot Bosna, the movie which uh, I, I took to all cinema festivals and so on. So my inspiration is my experience which results in my revolt. So Mr. Levy, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Poštovani gledalci, gost Al Jazeera bio je Bernar Henri Levy, francuski pisac, filozof, novinar. Ovu emisiju možete pronaći i na portalu aljazeera.net, kosa, crta, Balkans. Hvala vam na pažnji.